Hello everyone and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today we're going to talk about Facebook drama and it's kind of dumb and I do get it but sometimes this kind of drama gets on my nerves and in this one in particular I don't know what to think so hopefully you'll have some insight either because you have the experience because you've done this before or because you know somebody that something similar happened to and you know kind of talk about this that I think is very important if you're starting your herd and you are buying animals that are not really local to you. I feel like the more that we get into the breeding lines and improving and trying to work with what we have is when we start to look on Facebook or different social media platforms really to try to find good stock. I, You can find it in Craigslist but in our area Craigslist is used more for either commercial goats or very cheap goats but you don't see a lot of registered animals on Craigslist for us in specific so it could be completely different for you but once you start to look through social media you have the ability to see goats that are really far away from you so i try to stay away from those sites i try to always be part of local uh, facebook groups and try to kind of feel it be like read their posts see who posts who's the one that is always there who's the one that is always sharing who's the one that turns into a reputable breeder on that page and the people that had the most experience of year or years behind them treating with goats and the business itself so. i recently shared on my community page that i got this beautiful buck the only problem I had with this beautiful buck is that he was eight hours, I don't remember, but something like that. He's in Yakima, Washington. I'm probably butchering and it's probably not that the, that's not the name, but he is all the way up there and paying a transporter to bring him down, it would have blown my budget. And so if you are paying for good lines, register stock, you know, something that you want in your herd, you're going to make that extra or I'm going to make the extra sacrifice to try to save as much as I can to buy something worth improving what I already have. Um, this one in particular has great milking lines behind him and you know, it, it wasn't cheap, he wasn't cheap, but it wasn't the most outrageous price. But I knew he was, up when she told me, when I contacted the breeder and she told me that she was in Washington State and the particular area that she was, when I looked it up, there was like, there's no way. I mean, a transporter is going to charge me, I don't know, at least 300, if not more, to bring him down. And that's, that's really going to blow my budget. Thankfully, and I don't know, because I'll come back with an answer to this because he's not here yet. There was the show where the breeder that I'm buying him from is going to attend. And there is another breeder that lives like an hour and a half away from us, east of us, that she's going to go to that show. So she's able to put her, put him in her trailer and bring him down to Roseburg and where I'm gonna go pick him up so because she lives there so anyways um, it kind of works out um, the breeder told me it was this weekend and now it's gonna be the next weekend um, and it just it you know it's a miscommunication but it it was just when you're doing this kind of deal that you're doing it on the internet you're you're trusting a person um, in the same way with her, for, with me, you know what I'm saying? Because every time that I purchase a goat, I usually do, I usually go and see the goat. Or if it's a baby, you kind of get the pictures and stuff. And then you go ahead and do a deposit, which usually is half of what you're going to pay. And then by the time you pick it up, you do the other half. Well, the thing is that when you're transporting a goat, uh, breeders want 100% of the money before they put the animal on the trailer that it's going to send it to you. 
And so you have to be able to trust enough this breeder to know that they're not going to just keep your money. Very convenient when you're trying to sell a goat, but I do understand the feeling that I'm gonna put this goat in this trailer, it's gonna drive eight hours south, but um, you know, I just don't wanna wait for you to go see him so you make the second half of the payment. So I do understand. I'm sure that you could send a goat with the hopes that somebody else is going to give you the other half. And maybe once you're there, they just don't have the money and you have a goat with a transporter that doesn't know what to do with this goat. So it makes sense that they want 100% of the payment before they put the animal on the trailer but it also makes me nervous um, despite the fact that I do know that this is um, not so like it, it doesn't have a lot of years behind them I think they started their farm in 2019 but I see them on that page all the time and I see them interacting with other farms that I know that they go to shows together and it really put me at ease when I see this kind of relationship but that's not the story so anyway so she said that next weekend is when she's gonna put him on the trailer so I either will have to pick him up late at night on Saturday or I'm gonna have to go pick him up Sunday morning so and and this is um, not with a transporter so this person was able to find somebody who was traveling towards this area this soon and not charge me for it because she's really coming back from a show that was up there in Washington State I think that's where it is anyways so it all kind of coincided and it worked out that way and I'm really excited and I'm not really not trusting this person but I've seen a case that it went really really bad and that's what I want to talk to you about now sometimes I think it was at the end of March maybe in April there was this post from a big breeder on that Facebook page that was saying that there was a person that was basically blackmailing her into um, just creating a post on that page and exposing her for selling an animal that was sick. Apparently the big breeder, that I'm not gonna give names, but if you're a part of the page, you know who she is. Uh, this big breeder, which I have nothing bad to say about her or her farm, because I've never dealt with them. Um, and they're actually moving from the Pacific Northwest somewhere else. I think they're going somewhere, either Midwest, somewhere else. So I that's not where I'm coming from I'm not shading that breeder but I'm trying to explain how complicated things can get and why this bad experience of this person is making me doubt when I buy a goat this way so anyways what happens is that this person in Northern California bought two does from this big breeder that if I'm not mistaken she's in Washington State and um, not too far up from Oregon but she's somewhere there so anyway she gets these two goats and eventually she receives them like she waits for transport she pays the whole thing you know the breeder sends I don't know what it was what kind because the whole deal was about uh, the registrations but you know the transporter brings the paperwork for the person to register in their name or transfer it in their name now a couple of days later later the person in Northern California allegedly texted this person and said that you know one of the goats was really really sick and you know that's kind of the bad part is like you're paying a lot of money for these animals that not only you're paying a lot of money for but you're also paying to transport and then once they get to you they could be alive but they could get some kind of I don't remember what the name is but if you transport a goat for too many hours they are at risk of getting sick and so you never know if the animal is healthy enough to be okay with the trip or not so this person, Northern California, says, you know, 
you know, I have this very sick goat, blah, blah, blah. Apparently she posted on a Facebook page about, you know, you know this is what's happening to her, trying to get some help online. And the breeder was very clear, just take the animal to the vet, which sounds very like, yeah. But I don't know the situation and I don't know what the symptoms were of that goat being sick. So I'm not gonna insert my comment about that. But apparently they had a back and forth where the breeder said, you just need to take her to a vet. Um, apparently she did. And if you know what an emergency vet is gonna cost you, I don't know where you are, but for cats and dogs here is about $135 just to have them in, you know, the office and then it's all that and a, a vet visit especially if they're not knowledgeable in goats you can spend seven eight hundred dollars and they're gonna tell you they don't know what she has they're gonna give her vitamin b probably an antibiotic probably some bosi some kind of thing that if we're being honest we could have a home if we have a prescription for some of those things or some other things that are not even prescription so I don't know if the person in Northern California was trying to avoid a big bill, whatever the case may be, you're excited to receive a goat, you are promised that this goat is healthy, and then a couple of days later, this goat is not. So what happens is that, and, and, and this is all allegedly because this is post between the breeder and the person in Northern California, okay? So this is not my first-hand knowledge on this. This is what they both shared, different, different versions of the same story. And again, it's not about them, but what we can learn from this experience. So anyways, the goat dies. The girl dies. And the other one is there, but she's in... According to the person in Northern California, she's in really rough shape and she is missing a lot of hair. Um, this girl happened to be in milk. I don't know the other one, but this girl happened to be in milk. And so because of that, she, you know, the breeder was saying, no, every time she's in milk, she loses a lot of hair. But she had like the pictures that the person in Northern California, the buyer posted, she looked horrible. She looks so, so, so bad. It was, if I would have to guess what she had, it was a zinc deficiency. If you've ever seen a goat with zinc deficiency, I have zinc on me at all times when I learned this because my bucks will do that. Um, they start chewing their own hair and I don't know if they eat it or they just bite it and drop it I don't know what it is but they they get all this bald legs after the rut and two of them do and so I give them zinc and, and there's you know an amount that you have to give and put in their food and blah 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 so I'm not gonna get into that but that's exactly how it looked like it looked like bald patches in her back the legs and you know when when they're deficient of something that their coat is really rough, not shiny, dry, instead of kind of falling on top of each other, they're like spikes and not hair. That goat looked terrible. Now, the breeder did say that she was missing hair because she was in milk and that this line of hers tend to do that every time they're in milk because they're high producers which I've never had a goat that produced six pounds of milk a day I'll be lying if I say that so I don't know it might be something very common you tell me if you have a goat that produces that much that is a Nigerian because this is a Nigerian goat so anyway um, the big drama between them which I'm not gonna get into but the big drama was about the registration because apparently the person lost the paperwork and so if the the breeder still has them because she didn't switch them then they still show on your adga own goat kind of situation like the breeder where i got dom she had 200 goats under her name just because people didn't switch the registration into their name so the the client, the person in Northern California, asks if she can go into her account and kind of send the register. You know how 
you can transfer a registration directly so it gets mailed to the new person. So she thought it would be pretty easy for the breeder to do that. Well, what happened according to the breeder is that she was going to have them linear appraised. And I mean, I don't remember exactly what it was, but basically she re what she did, the breeder said that she did, she removed them from her list. I don't know how you do that. I didn't look into it, but apparently you can do that. You can remove them from your list of own goats. So, because it, it kind of makes sense when you're going to go into milk test, which I was going to do this year, and it just I'm glad I didn't do it because it, it's been crazy. But if you're going to do milk test, you have to put every single dough that it's in milk in your milk test. You can't pick and choose who you're going to put in milk test. So it could be a combination of linear praise and, you know, milk thing, whatever the case may be, but she, the breeder, removed the goat from her list. So what happens is when this person that bought the animals from her wanted her to, the breeder, to transfer the registration online so she would receive it in the mail the breeder said I don't have them anymore I removed them so I can't do that for you and that's what really started the whole drama okay now I don't know if the breeder mentioned this to the person but this is where I am concerned every time I buy a goat that I'm not there to pick up myself you can look at these beautiful pictures on Facebook or you can look at these beautiful pictures anywhere really and realize that you know this is a beautiful animal and you're like great lines beautiful animal that's what I want but then if when you receive this animal that you paid a pretty penny for doesn't look the way that it looked in pictures then you start to wonder really uh, and I'm not talking about maybe thinner uh, I'm not talking about you know, things that can change because of feed and stuff like that. I'm talking about a healthy looking animal versus a sickly looking animal. So, Briar wants to be milked. So, I just really, that's where my main concern is because, and again, this could be as simple as you, the buyer, asking the breeder to take a video of the animal right before they send the animal or they put it in the trailer. Maybe you can ask the breeder to put the date, stamp the date there so you can see exactly what the animal looks like right before it leaves. I think there's a lot of margin, like a big margin of error that it's allowed when there is somebody in between the breeder and the buyer. And I think it's very easily um, attributed anything that's wrong with the animal with either a long trip or a not so great transporter which wasn't the case in this in this case that I'm talking about but it's like it's it's like you really have to um, I don't know how to say this nicely but Depending on the breeder and depending on the person that is selling this goat and their reputation and what they stand behind once they, you know, an animal leaves their farm. Like, I share with you guys, every time I sell a goat, it's the worst day of the week. Because, you know, the, the, the night before, if they already lost their testicles, I'm going to give them a bath so they're clean, they don't have any hay on them. Then the next day I brush them, I try to, you know, do everything, do the selenium, do the trim of hooves and all the things. And I usually sell them at least in pairs. So it's two animals. Like right now, I um, shaved one of the goats because it's, it has, a, since he was born, he had horrible looking hair. Horrible. And I don't think it's a deficiency. It's like, it's not your typical goat coat this looks like um like wool as if it was sh a sheep and i don't like it and he is good with his minerals he's good 
you know, he's a good eater, he's in good weight. There's nothing that shows that he's sick or that his FAMACHA score is low. No, everything, it's normal. It's just that his coat is really bad. And this year, I learned that if you shave your goat, it really helps them a lot to uh, not only look better, but it also helps them grow something more more shiny. I mean, if the animal is healthy, it's going to have a shinier coat. It's going to be more true to color. And you're just not letting them struggle going through the shedding part. So I've been slowly shaving the goats. And that way, it's really been changing the way that I've been doing things and the way that I've been seeing things because it helps quite a bit so that's part of my routine now so if I think about it I do put a lot of effort because I want them to they live with a color I buy them a color uh, for each one of them uh, I, I mean it's not a fancy color it's a five dollar color but I want them to live with a little color so they're easy to carry around if they have to or if they're not listening they don't have horns where you can grab them so I even print a paper with all the information and that's gonna be another video I, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of a ranty video <laughs> um, next but so but in I'm not saying I'm the best person I'm the best breeder I'm the best this I'm the best dad but what I'm trying to say is it will depend on the person that is selling the goat the the way that you're gonna receive a goat and you know if you receive your goat with trim hooves if you receive a goat with a shiny coat if you receive your goat um, not super skinny if you receive your goat you know there's a lot of things that can happen after you pick him up you know he could have diarrhea because of the move he could have if they're babies they could have coccidiosis like because of the stress of moving never happened to me before but it's a possibility so i do understand that even if you buy two doughs uh, one of them in milk you know it's not only a lot of work for the transporter to move them here and milk them along the way but I do understand why there's a bigger price tag in those things so I'm not saying that but I'm saying that you know it's very easy and I'm gonna put it both ways it's very easy to um, ruin somebody's reputation because you're alleging something I don't know if the person in Northern California is saying the truth. I don't know. This goat could could have looked a lot better and then at the time that she took the picture she was already going downhill because the second goat got sick too. But I do know that the breeder said that that goat left with patches of missing hair. So I think that as long as you tell that to the buyer I don't think the problem there, but I don't know if the communication was good enough between them to understand what I'm sending you versus what I'm expecting to receive. And that is a big thing. And you know, you see a lot of happy endings, like when you see Blue Cactus Dairy Goat, that her husband goes around and you know, delivers the kids. Um, the same thing when you know, you see them in big channels like Widom and Reeb, she buys from here in the Pacific Northwest and she receives the babies and they're fine there are always happy but happy endings but there are also this other side that a person alleging something could ruin somebody else's reputation like this lady was blackmailing the breeder in order to get their registrations because a goat that you paid a lot of money for that is not registered that you're not registering worth it's worth a lot less than a registered goat and those babies that they potentially will have will be unregistered because you didn't register your goat is it the breeder's fault that she lost those papers not really and it's so sad that she removed the goats because she had something coming up but I think the responsible thing to do is try to keep all those paperwork with you, uh, all that paperwork with you, and then send it immediately so that way you can get out of that waiting 
period for transferring a goat and stuff like that but it kind of always makes me this because of this experience that I've never heard happening before on Facebook groups that I'm part of um, it always makes me anxious to think about purchasing a goat that is not in our local area but then when I buy a goat from our local area I I just feel like they're not around me. There's not enough variety as far as pedigrees to mix. Like there are a lot of somewhat related goats um, or lines compared to mine. And there are, and honestly I've been looking and I don't like anything that I see. I mean, there are beautiful registered goats around me that I could have purchased, but no goat really caught my eye like that one. And it's not only because he has moon spots and he has blue eyes, it has nothing to do with that, but I liked what I saw and I really, I don't know, it is one of those things that you look at a million pictures of beautiful goats and you look at one and you say, that's the one. And I knew the farm, I knew that she's very active on social media, I know she's very active in shows, and I really thought that could be someone I could trust. Now, I'll report back on what I order versus what I'm receiving, uh, and hopefully I'm receiving, you know, the best version of this animal because I think he's beautiful and I do trust a breeder, but it's hard. It's hard because how much can you trust somebody that you don't know? That's the thing, you know? How much can you trust somebody that you've never seen in your entire life? Um, yeah, you hear their names, um, but you, you don't know. You don't know. So have you had any experience like this or have you seen it happen? That's my bigger question because... I feel like maybe I'm being a little bit over the top because this was one case. Now, if you are on that group, you know who that person is. And I appreciate if you don't put the farm's name down below because I don't know who's right and who's wrong. I'm just saying that I want to learn from this experience and I want to be smart about buying goats online and receiving what I order basically so that's all what I want to do so please just don't leave their names don't leave their farms don't I, this is not about giving clout to those two farms um, it's it's about learning something and keeping in mind something and being smart about buying goats that are going to have to be transported from somewhere else um, this far I've always picked up my goats. This is the first one so that's why I think I'm a little bit nervous about this whole situation. But you guys are going to have to wait with me until next weekend. So when he gets here I'll introduce him to you. And I, I'll talk about my whole experience. So please share your thoughts in the comments down below. You are always so smart about giving ideas and sharing experiences and just I have a oh I have a bee that is she's on um what are those called dandelions goodbye so anyways leave your thoughts leave your comments did I have this hair sticking out the whole time you didn't say anything we're such good friends you didn't even tell me anyways Share it down below. If you enjoy this kind of content, always let me know by giving a like to this video, leaving a comment. If you're new, please subscribe. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye, guys.